Hello, everybody. I trust you can see my desktop. Uh, so we've seen shots previously of uh, sod houses. And uh, the, the point about this is that uh, in a temperate climate, it's fairly straightforward to uh, create roof gardens, providing you have uh, maintenance. Uh, we've seen uh, a marvellous example of the Stockwell Street Gardens, Benz's Gardens, as I like to think of them, as an example of how maintenance can breathe, breathe life into an area. But uh, I'm wanting to talk about more, I'm wanting to talk about London, and I'm wanting to talk about uh, more governmental uh, things, so it's very much a change of tune. Uh, how do you promote uh, green or living roofs? I'll go on later on to talk about uh, their benefits. Uh, you can do it through reduced stormwater charges, but they don't exist separately in London. We pay for stormwater through our water rates, Thames Water, uh, and we don't have a, a separate physical system. We have a combined uh, sewage system where everything, both foul and surface water goes into the, uh, the one system. Uh, it would be possible to get uh, Thames water uh, to give you a rebate, as it exists in other countries, for your water charges. If you provided a, a roof garden, it's very common in Germany, um, uh, uh, Dresden, Berlin, and so forth. Uh, we can do it through regulation, and uh, the my, main purposes of regulation in this country are going to be through either the uh, GLA or the London Borough or the national government, which is the English government since the devolution. Um, we are basic, the, one of the basic messages of this talk is that we're pretty Neanderthal compared with uh, um, many other, certainly European and uh, uh, countries and uh, much of North America, it depends state, state to state. You can do it by financial sub subsidy. We also have a very poor track record uh, in, in, uh, in England, partly because local government is pushed for finance. Uh, central government doesn't uh, deal with it. Uh, the Green Deal subsidy scheme uh, doesn't uh, uh, cover uh, roof gardens. And we can do it by uh, promotion. So London's done amazingly well, considering it can't reduce you don't get a reduction of stormwater charges. Uh, we uh, haven't got an effective system of regulation, such an instance, and uh, we don't really receive much in the way of financial subsidy. There's just one or two things that one could go for. Um, and uh, so regulation, well, in Germany, it goes back to the 1980s, and particularly in Western Berlin, it's very much state by state. West Berlin, um, their nature conservation law of 1984. And this was one uh, result. It's the Ulfa uh, film studio, former film studios, and then uh, they, they closed in 1970. It's not Babelsberg for anybody who knows, it's in Tempelhof uh, for anybody who knows Berlin. And uh, uh, you ended up with the, whoops, these are the um, sedum roofs, which date from the 1980s. Uh, they're um, uh, extensive roof gardens, uh, but they have recorded about 70 or 80 species on the, the, those roofs. So what are the benefits of, of roof gardens? Well, biodiversity, um, and uh, I compare roof gardens to being an island, therefore you tend not to get ma mammals. The um, uh, uh, fire escape access for the, the foxes at Greenwich uh, are uh, a bit of a security anomaly, you would have thought, uh, but uh, they're quite good for insects and for, for birds, as we have seen. Biomass, much better for intensive roof gardens, I, I believe. Um, slowing of rainwater runoff uh, applies to both, but particularly for uh, intensive roof gardens. Evapotranspiration increases, we saw that at, at, at Greenwich, obviously. Uh, it's got a, a cooling, they've got a cooling effect. Uh, they act as a, 
both for the external microclimate and for the internal microclimate because they offer roof insul insulation. They protect roof me membranes from ultraviolet light and degradation. I think Tom will talk about that uh, later on. They clean the air, raise the albedo, uh, create oxygen, uh, reduce the um, carbon dioxide, uh, uh, SO2 and uh, NOx and NO2. Uh, you can produce food on, on roofs and uh, you can use them for recreation and amenity. So there's an extensive uh, um, series of uh, research into this, this area and also that's including reviews of research um, which you can uh, uh, easily look at. I give at the end some some references. Um, this is an example of an in historic intensive roof. Ben showed a slide of it. It's the Kensington Roof Gardens, uh, and uh, clearly you've got a biomass there. Unfortunately, it closed in 2018. The latest news is that uh, it might reopen as a private club, um, and that was in the Evening Standard in, in mid January. So maybe we'll be able to go there on, on open days again. Um, I would like to record that I first visited about 1972 or 73 and saw the Bonzo Dog Band there, if anybody recalls it. It was a memorable evening. Uh, and uh, this is further studies which you can look up. You can use it for food production. We saw uh, a little bit of Benz's uh, vegetable gardens. This is how the French do it in a garden which opened in 2020. Uh, at near the um, uh, Porte de Versailles, the Parc des Ex Ex Expositions. And if you go there, um, then uh, you can also go to the, uh, the cafe area, which is in, in that area. And that's an internal view of the, the cafe area. I suspect it's uh, self, it, it looks like it's self-service. Uh, I clearly haven't been, it's called Le Peshoir. So how do you promote green roofs? Um, I, I've already gone through this, uh, but in uh, Vienna, you can get grants of 20,000 euros, which is about 17,500 quid um, uh, for an individual uh, roof garden. Um, and uh, this, these are the details of how you go through it, through, it uh, through the process of applying. Similarly in uh, Basel, um, there's a, an extensive program which has been going on since the 1990s. This is a point, one of my major points, that London is very much be, behind in terms of, it's Neanderthal, frankly, in terms of really having effective governmental-led roof gardening policies. Um, uh, you can, uh, you've got uh, community green space grants in London, which are uh, the, the GLA, the Mayor of London, um, and uh, last year there were about 54 pro community projects, and this is the only uh, roof garden project in London. It's £19,900 just to the one roof garden in the whole of London last year. Compare that with, with uh, uh, many German cities. It's peanuts, and uh, this is the only image uh, I found of it. Uh, this is again emphasizing the point about management and maintenance as Ben, ben so eloquently showed. Climate change. This is the, the current London plan which dates back to uh, Boris Johnson's time uh, uh, and is the uh, 2016 uh, London plan which developed from the 2011 London plan and that had a, a, a green roof policy, policy 511. Uh, but to the new London plan, which Robert Jenrick, the minister, has just uh, accepted, only has this, which is very, very little. But what it does have is the introduction of an urban greening factor. Um, the, the Germans had um, developed urban greening factors in uh, the, the 1980s. consequent on that nature conservation law. So we're about four decades behind other countries. Uh, this is uh, very much uh, uh, a potted uh, uh, description of an urban greening factor, but notice 
uh, basically you've got a factor of 0.8 and it's very much based on area calculation or for extensive roofs uh, 0.7 or for uh, sedum mat uh, 0.3 and then you multiply by the area of, of same. Uh, uh, greener walker safety, um, this is looking at Southwark's plan, we've got all the what, 32 uh, London boroughs that you need to look at and you can see what their policies are for roof gardens. Uh, this is all I could find for uh, uh, Southwark in their uh, current new Southwark plan. Um, remember, we're 40 years behind uh, Berlin. We're also, in a way, um, a little bit behind the Italians. Uh, the Torre uh, Guinigi in Lucca uh, dates from the, the 14th century, sorry about that. And uh, I think it's had these trees since uh, for the last 500 years. Uh, the Mayor of London is again launching another uh, uh, version of a basically a, a, a review and implementation policy. Uh, but this is it's now 2020, it's 12 years after Ken Livingston in his version of the London plan was promoting this sort of thing. Um, uh, these are my references and uh, uh, that, that oh my, it's got rather small. That's my reference, but that's the end of the slideshow. <laughs>